Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's me coming at, back at you again with another quick vid. Now, there's been recent ramblings going on across social media about Kevin Durant's uh, recent signing with the Golden State Warriors, who were the finals for this year in 2015's uh, NBA uh, World Champions. Now, I don't cover the NBA because this is primarily a bo boxing channel, um, or, you know, sometimes I cover MMA on some occasions, whatnot, but... Needless to say, I thought I'd go ahead and chime in and add my two cents to this because it seems it seems to be some bit of a big uproar and debate about Durant signing with the Warriors. Now, those out there like Stephen A. Smith, he's been you know coming out and you know chastising Durant or being very very critical of him for signing on to the Golden State Warriors as if this is a weak move. Um, you know, some are you know saying that you know why are you signing to a team that you couldn't beat. Uh, blah 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 and you know what's interesting interesting enough is that Charles Barkley also had to chime in on this as well and this is what he had to say he said here quote and he gave an interview with um, e uh, with ESPN I'm bringing up the article for you come on come on come on come on come on come on uh, forgive me guys, and it's a little slow on my iPad. Okay, here we go. It says here, quote, and he gave an interview with ESPN's Mike and Mike, which he's always a frequent guest on. He said here, quote, that I, you know, I was I was disappointed. Um, I, I was disappointed like I was disappointed when LeBron went to Miami. Barkley said on ESPN's Mike and Mike on Wednesday. Now, Kevin is a terrific player. He's a good kid, you know, but I'm just disappointed with the fact that he weakened another team and he's going to kind of a you know he's going to kind of a gravy train on a terrific um on a terrific warriors team just disappointed from a competitive uh, standpoint because just like it meant more to lebron to win one in cleveland it meant more for kevin to win one in oklahoma than it would be in golden state now we've developed this thing now where you 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 keep telling these guys like hey hey man you know if you know if you don't win a championship why, why you're a bum you know what i'm saying i don't feel like i'm a bum he said I'm pretty sure that Patrick Ewing, Carl Malone, John Stockton, we think we, you know, we were pretty damn good. You know, we could have had play with some other team, you know, other guys and kind of cheated our way to the championship. <laughs> That's very ironic for Charles Barkley to say that. But let me continue. But there is this thing that, you know, that started with this new generation with these uh, guys feel so much pressure. Everybody wants to win. Now. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there, and I'm going to add my little two cents to this. <laughs> now, Charles, now when you're, when, you're making a, when you're making statements like this, you should know that you're putting yourself in a position of ridicule. And let me tell you why. And let me put a little disclaimer out. I got no problem with Charles Barkley. I am a fan of Charles Barkley. I'm a, you know, I, you know, I totally respect the fact that he's very candid. He's very, very vocal, and he's not afraid to say what he wants to say. OK, I can respect the, uh, uh, I can respect a man for being blunt and being honest by the, you know, about uh, how he truly feels about certain situations. But sometimes you got to call him out on the bullshit. OK, this right is bullshit, Charles. Now, let me tell you why, because you didn't say that shit when you were begging to get out of your contract with Philadelphia. When you went out, when you were trying to get out of Philadelphia to get on a winning team. Yeah. Remember that back in 1992 when the, um, the Sixers were struggling in that season? And you were begging, you know, to get out of that contract because you know you they, that franchise wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, so you know nobody really ridiculed you for that. So that's why you were you were traded over to the Phoenix Suns. Look who the Phoenix Suns have. They were a winning team for like what four or five years, or actually three years when they um, acquired Kevin Johnson back in '89. They put together a great solid team with Tom Chambers, Danny, uh, not Danny Age. I'm sorry, Tom Chambers, um, Dan Marley, Eddie Johnson, who was playing there at one point. Uh, but needless to say, you were on the 93 squad. You know, you had Johnson there. You still had John, Tom Chambers, who was um, directed more to a supporting role. Richard Dumas, Cedric Sabalos, um, Elliot Perry, Frank Johnson, Dan Marley was still there. I could go on and on and on. Oliver Miller. So you had a great squad, and that team became the winningest team of that, uh, the winningest team, the team with the best record at that time. I remember that very well. Okay. But you came up short with the Chicago Bulls. But what happened after that, Charles? Two straight seasons after that, you guys blew it against the Houston Rockets. In both series, you had a 3-1 lead against the Rockets, and you guys blew it. 
when you yeah remember that ninety five season the ninety five playoffs when Charles when I'm sorry Charles when El, uh, Mario Ellie blew the kiss of death at you guys when he made that three point shot that killed that series against you in the Suns yeah remember that Charles and after that season yeah okay I'll give you credit when credit is due you did give gave the franchise another shot after that um, after the ninety five disaster season it wasn't a disaster but when I mean by disaster you guys blew it. You had a chance to t knock off the Rockets, and you blew that 3-1 lead. And that was the second year in a row that you did it. So, needless to say, you gave uh, the Suns another shot at the 95-96 season, and you guys uh, struggled badly. I mean, it wasn't your fault. You guys were dealing with injuries and whatnot. There were several guys that were being you know, traded elsewhere or guys signed to other teams like Cedric Tavales went over to the Lakers. But needless to say, well, actually, he went to the Lakers a year prior. But, you know, you get my drift. But anyhow, after you left the Suns, what did you do, Charles? You went over to Houston, the same team that you couldn't beat. That's right. You went over to uh, Akeem Olajuwon. You went over to, got, you know, when they had Clyde Drexler there. They had Sam Cassell there. They had, uh, who else did they have there? They had Matt Maloney, who was a good uh, uh, who was a starting point guard at the time. So, you know, come on, man. Come on, man. You can't have it both ways. You know, actually, you know what? Sam wasn't even on that team. He was actually uh, with Phoenix when he came aboard so yeah i take that back but needless to say charles you can't sit here and, and criticize another guy for doing what they're doing when you did the same thing <laughs> wow now for those out there who you know other people out there you know who's criticizing kevin durant for doing what he did please guys do some research on this because it hasn't been done before it's not it's not a surprise to anyone okay like i said charles barkley did it twice Shaquille O'Neal did it when he left Orlando to go to L.A. because he wanted to be with the winning team. He wanted to be in a position where he's going to get a championship. OK, he did it with L.A. Detlef Shrimp did it with Portland when Scottie Pippen signed on to the Troubles. OK, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, when they went over to Boston, Ray Allen, they all did it. So they could not put on a winning combination. So, Charles, you have no reason to gripe and complain. For those out there who are criticizing Kevin Durant like Stephen A. Smith is, you guys should know better. This has been done time over time, time over time, time over time again. Okay? Now, as far as the LeBron James situation is concerned, yes, LeBron, I criticize him for doing that the way he did it. Okay? I had no problem with him going to Miami. But just the way he conducted himself on that whole process you know, leaving Cleveland out to dry when he didn't give management and heads up what he, on what he was going to do. He didn't tell them that he was going to leave. At least Kevin Durant did that. But LeBron James didn't do that. So he conducted himself in a very, very unprofessional way the way he left Cleveland the first time. So that was my only critique on him, all he did. I didn't appreciate him leaving um, Cleveland to go to Miami in that fashion. Again, I had no problem with LeBron doing that. But at the same time, the fashion he did it, that was pretty unprofessional. Okay. So to hold up an announcement in a gym in Connecticut on ESPN, a special where you, you know, pretty much um, humiliated Cleveland for doing that. So, yeah, you don't you I mean, you lose stripes for that, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you lose stripes for that. But needless to say, it is what it is. But, you know, come on, you guys, you, you guys can't act like this hasn't been done before. It's been done many times. All right. I have no problem with Kevin Durant doing what he did. All right. It's his prerogative to go to a winning team. He felt that was the Golden State Warriors. And besides, everybody knew that he was leaving OKC. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't see the big gripe here. So, um, let me know what you guys think about it. Care to comment, share, subscribe. Signing off. Peace.